I have dark hair and a dark shirt on, so I apologize in advance if the entire video looks like this. I told myself this year I wasn't going to do monthly wrap-ups, <laughs> but then I didn't post a wrap-up for like five months, so. I really miss just talking about books, and I like the vlogs I've been doing lately, but I feel like I just get off topic so often and I don't even mention what I'm reading. So revamping the channel. I'm sorry it's been so weird. Thank you if you've stuck around, but today I wanted to wrap up what I've done in the months of November and December. I've been reading a ton, which is super strange because I've been so stressed and so anxious, but I've also been picking up a lot of poetry, so that might account for some of the stuff happening. So I'm just gonna mash this all into one video and do a end of year wrap up because I want to talk about books I've read but I don't necessarily want to refill you on what's happened since July because that would be like 60 books. Let's just get started. One of the first books I read in November was Paper Girls by Brian K. Vaughn and other people who illustrated it. <laughs> that would be Cliff Chang and Matthew Wilson. The best way I can describe it is Stranger Things meets Saga. It's literally those two worlds combined. It's set in the 80s, it's about a group of girls, there's aliens, there's weird time travel-y, whimey stuff. It's just nuts and I know a lot of people say it's too confusing and they give it like three stars but I'm an idiot who doesn't understand any sci-fi and I really enjoyed it. So I think it's really accessible to all readers even if you're not into sci-fi. Very much a lot of girl power. The art is gorgeous. I love the dynamic between the girls. I just highly recommend this. I think there's three volumes out right now and I've read the first two. They're pretty good. I gave the first one five stars and the second one 4.5 stars. The next book I listened to on audiobook it was Why Not Me by Mindy Kaling and this is the second book I've listened to from Mindy and they're just so much fun. I've gotten really into celebrity audiobooks this year. Not even just celebrity audiobooks but like like memoirs and non-fiction books and audiobook and this is no exception and these are so much fun to listen to. Mindy is hilarious. Mindy is so sweet. I know it talks about her career and her childhood and just all a bunch of different stories. It's so good. I gave it four stars and I'm not even a huge fan of her. It was just really enjoyable and they're like five hours or so so that's pretty quick. Mm. Focus on me. There, thank you. Did not want to be Voldemort today. The next book I read for class for my war literature class was In Country by Bobby Ann Mason. Finally a physical book I can hold up. This book focuses on the Vietnam War or the aftermath of the Vietnam War. It's about this girl whose father she never met because he went off to the war and died. And so she's trying to reconcile who her father was and so she's just navigating these feelings of estrangement from her father and she's trying to understand the war so that she can understand her father. And it's set in the 70s, 80s, 70s I think. The writing is okay, the characters are okay. I get what this was trying to do and I think it was pretty but I didn't really love it, didn't really hate it, it just kind of sat in the middle for me. If you're interested in Vietnam War literature maybe pick this up but otherwise there's really nothing too special about it and I'm not saying that because I read it for class. Then I read another poetry book called No Matter the Wreckage by Sarah Kay. Gave it five stars. I love this. This is the type of poetry I like where there's tons of varied subject matter. The writing style is gorgeous and innovative and unique. I just can't say enough good things about it. It's feminist. It made me laugh. It made me cry. Just read it. It's so good. Next I read And I Darken but I don't know where I put it so I can't hold it up but I also read the second one this month so I'll just pretend that I have both of them. Here's the first one, here's the second one. This is a, I don't know if it's a trilogy or an entire series that's upcoming but the third one comes out in June. It's set in the 15th century and it's a Vlad the Impaler retelling with a female Vlad. Our two main characters are Lada and Radu and they live in Vlachia which is like near Hungary and the business. I didn't take the AP world history test. It's complicated, but it's about the Ottomans and the Byzantines and their little conflict. <laughs> Specifically focusing on Radu and Lada and the Sultan's son in the Ottoman Empire whose name is Mahmed. The thing I love about it is that the characters in this are so interesting. Lada is our Vlad the Impaler character and she's just ruthless. Like she does what she wants, does not care about anyone else. She's super independent. She's one of those morally gray characters that you love but also like you she's a problematic fave but it's just oh she's so interesting. Radu on the other hand is her opposite who just wears his emotions on his sleeve. He's so sweet and kind. The world is so cruel and I want to wrap him in blankets. It's just such an interesting series because of those character dynamics but it's also really interesting politically and I learned a lot about world history. <laughs> this one, the second one, is about the fall of Constantinople and it's just so good. So I gave both of them five stars. They're 
super intriguing books. Very mature for YA, not so much in subject matter, but just in the fact that the characters are so complex and this deals with themes like religion and belonging. It's so intricate, I highly recommend them. I reread Shatter Me in November, but I don't think we need to talk about it because you understand how much I love Shatter Me. I feel like my hair is just getting crazier and crazier. The next book I read was Everyday Sexism by Laura Bates, which is a nonfiction book from a person who created a website where you could submit acts of everyday sexism that happened to you. And this is a collection of different aspects of sexism, like street harassment. And it's been a while, so I can't remember much else. Do I have it in here? I might have it in here. I don't, whatever. I did underline several things that I'd never really considered before, which is what I look for in feminist books. So there's issues like motherhood and how when you become pregnant, you are now in the public eye as a pregnant figure. That makes no sense. She said it a lot more eloquently than I could, but I just thought it was really interesting. Some of it was stuff that I knew was a little bit obvious, so it could get slow, but other parts of it were really intriguing. She does focus a lot on intersections of feminism and especially you know the treatment of lesbians and the treatment of trans women sometimes it could just get a little textbooky took me a second to read because of that but I did find that I enjoyed it in the end although I wished that it could have focused more on the entries that people submitted rather than the author explaining herself I feel like the entries could have spoken for themselves with only a little bit of dialogue in between but this was very heavily driven by Laura Bates's conversation and dialogue so that was a little heavy I gave that four stars and then I read Reasons to Stay Alive by Matt Haig which is a book that my friend Miriam sent me so danke schön me I read this book because I was having a really hard time with my anxiety and I wanted a little pick-me-up book. But warning, this book can be triggering to those of you with feelings. I would just advise that if you're in a dark spot, maybe don't pick it up. The first half talks a lot about Matt's experience with depression and anxiety and medication, and that was just really hard to read, but then the end goes into like advice and things to think about and be more mindful of your mental illness and that part was really helpful for me. This book was just gorgeously written. Matt is a really talented author. Really good advice as far as making sure that you're staying positive. The only downside to this book was not only that it was a little bit triggering for me at first but also that he's really negative about medication. He said over and over like oh I don't want to rely on medication and it was so scary for me. I don't want to take medication which is an opinion you can have but I also feel like if I was a young teen reading this book it would make me terrified to take medicine. So that was just something I kept in mind. I take medicine, it works great, I'm not scared of it. So things to keep in mind, but I gave that four stars. Then I listened to Heartless by Marissa Meyer on audiobook, which is kind of a tradition for me to listen to Marissa Meyer on audiobook, and I enjoyed it. I'm not gonna sit here and say it was the best book ever, but I do still think about it. It's an Alice in Wonderland retelling told from the Queen of Hearts perspective before she went evil. Like all Marissa Meyer books, it was pretty predictable, but I kind of knew that going into it. Nevertheless, I think the way that she can manipulate worlds that we're already familiar with and make them new is really interesting. The characters were all fleshed out really nice. I like the little winks to Alice in Wonderland it gave, which obviously it's a retelling, so it's gotta be. It was a little cheesy at times, but it was a really good audiobook. It kept me engaged. I think I listened to it like in two sittings so just for entertainment value a nice solid three stars then I read the becoming of Noah Shaw let me just tell you a thing I was so pumped about this book when I heard about it I was like Noah Shaw Mara Dyer hell yeah I didn't like it <laughs> It seems to be a consensus, so I don't feel bad saying that, but it just, it's so weird. Like, I've gotten used to the Mara Dyer series being kind of hard to understand and loopholes and plot holes and just crazy stuff happening, but this book became like, what the heck is happening? And I think my frustration about that is driven by the characters themselves and not the, usually it's just like the plot is weird, but I love the characters. But in this book, the characters were infuriating, specifically Noah. My least favorite trope in YA is using miscommunication as a plot device. And the fact that Noah and Mara constantly were hiding things from each other and lying to each other and omitting facts from each other. I hate it. I hate it. And so like you've gone three books progressing their character development and Michelle Hoffman was just like, oh look, a trash can to put everything in. It just downhill. Downhill. I give it two stars. Still gonna read the sequel because I'm still trash for it. 
it's it was problematic from page one with that stupid trigger warning page that was all over Twitter and it did not get better. But Jamie saved the book. I love him. Then I read Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. And listen, it wasn't bad. I know a lot of people say it's horrible, they're not it's not canon, they're never gonna read it again, it's so bad and blah blah. Listen, I didn't hate this book. Maybe it's because I'm not a huge fan of I mean, I'm a fan of Harry Potter. Don't read it like that, but I'm not super into Harry Potter, so I read it and I didn't have a problem with it. I didn't think it was that out of character. The only thing I hated about it is that Snape was in it. I had no problems with it. Draco had a ponytail. Why are we upset about this? <laughs> I'm playing. I get why people are mad about it. I wasn't mad about it. I gave it four stars. Then I read Turtles All the Way Down by John Green, which I was really excited about because Tiffios was my favorite book of all time before Shatter Me, like the ultimate favorite ever. I know that a lot of people are saying it's not very plot driven and there's good OCD reps, so I pretty much agree with everything that's been said by most people who have read this. My deal is two things. <laughs> First of all, this book talks about medication in the same way that Matt Haig does in his book where it's kind of this hesitance to do it, they don't want to have to rely on it, it's the scary thing is bad. I'm just tired of that conversation. I get that it's relatable to some people, they don't want to be on medication, which it's a choice that's fine, but I just hate the approach to it that's like, it's so bad, it's not gonna work. It works for me. <laughs> so just, I hate that it was unchallenged, that she thought medication was so bad and it was nothing's gonna help her. Like you didn't even take the medication to be able to see if it worked or not so and second of all her best friend Daisy the worst <laughs> I'm so taught him off he just tweeted something what did she say sorry hold on important not about restore me okay what was I talking about right the worst that's all I have to say I feel like I'm talking too long about each book but it's about a girl with OCD it wasn't amazing but it was John Gray it made me think it was relatable because of anxiety and I gave it 4.5 stars. Then I read Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson. Again, I listened to this one on audiobook because I'm all here for like memoirs. Wasn't groundbreaking material necessarily. Like it didn't have anxiety advice that cured me or anything, but it was really enjoyable, really relatable at times. Sometimes her voice on the audiobook could get a little bit grating and it was hard to listen to, so I don't know if I would recommend the audiobook, uh, but the book itself is pretty funny. It's just about a woman who has depression and anxiety and how she deals with that, and I think the message at the beginning of the book saying, the way to get out of depression is to face it head on and decide to be furiously happy just to spite it. That was such a good message that that made me laugh even though this got off topic toward the middle. It has a really good message and it's still funny and this is the kind of book I want to write one day. Being funny and having a good message like about anxiety. So this is a really big inspiration for me writing wise and also anxiety life wise. So felt it was pretty good. Gave it four and a half stars. Then I read The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas which is everyone's book they're talking about this year. It's on a ton of best of 2017 lists. I feel like I'm just sweating and have hair all over my face, but whatever. This follows a girl named Star whose good friend was killed by a cop while she was in the car with him. It follows the Black Lives Matter movement and justice for her friend and having to deal with the aftermath of his death and police brutality. I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't the biggest fan of this. And I say this all in the light of preserving the fact that it has a really good message and I still would recommend it to everyone to because it has such a valuable takeaway from it, especially for young black girls or anyone in between. However, I just think the book itself and the mechanics and the way it was written had a lot of work to go, specifically in the fact that there were a lot of scenes that were just so long of descriptions that weren't important in the grand scheme of the book so it weighed down like this book is huge I feel like with editing this could have been a hundred pages less just because so many things were focused on that didn't need to be focused on like a basketball game that took three pages or her feeding her dog for a page and a half it just there were so many unimportant parts that were fleshed out and I wanted more of different things in the book there's this conflict between her and one of her friends from a, her predominantly white school and her friend unfollows her on tumblr for this thing that happens and she gets really upset because that happens and my complaint isn't that she gets upset about it but for me it's so weird to have tumblr drama like it would make so much sense if it was on facebook or twitter but the fact that it was tumblr just took me out of the story a little bit and there's just little things like that sprinkled throughout the book that just made it a little bit weird for me like i know a lot of people say they don't like pop culture references in books and this has a lot of pop culture references so i think it might just be 
something like that. It's just not my taste. Maybe it didn't bother you, but it bothered me a little bit. But other than those minor things, like I said, still a very empowering book. I love the message this left, especially at the end about fighting back. I hope that everything I said doesn't make it seem like the book is horrible because it's still good. It's a must read. After I read that, I went on a little bit of a train of black girls in YA. So next I read The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon, and then Piecing Me Together by Renee Watson. Both of these have black protagonists. The Sun is Also a Star is about an undocumented Jamaican immigrant who's getting deported in her 24-hour escapade with this Korean American boy. It's not just a light fluffy contemporary. It deals with very real issues. So every character you meet that you think you just get a glance of, they get their own chapter that shows their backstory and it really flushes out every character in this book. It's unlike anything I've ever read, especially in the YA contemporary genre. I thought it was cute. I thought it was meaningful and I just, I'm not gonna lie. This got me back into YA contemporary because I thought I'd lost all hope, but it was just so good. So I gave this one five stars. And Piecing Me Together is about a girl who lives in a not very great part of town, but she does go to a great private school that has a program for her for young black girls. And the bulk of this book is about her dealing with the fact that she comes from a lower class family, but the black girls that she interacts with are all from the upper class. So it's a struggle between race and class and finding her identity and dealing with racism in her town and just just a bunch of, I don't want to call them microaggressions, but it's the very macro stuff that you don't really think about that this book just exposes in such real ways that it just opens your eyes to stuff that sometimes I would never even thought about. So I also think it was a beautifully done book and I gave this one four and a half stars. Then I listened to Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay, which is a book of essays about feminism and intersectionality, fun stuff, Scrabble, <laughs> if you're into that. Again, listening to things on audio, it kind of, it's enjoyable, but it, go, it goes in one ear out the other a little bit for me. But I do remember I really enjoyed this. It was so engaging to listen to. I understand why so many professors teach it because as it's funny, it's educational, and it just brings up so many great points. It has so many examples, and I think it was very brilliantly done. It's not as boring as, I don't want to say boring, but everyday sexism could sometimes drag and this one did not drag ever. It's a perfect blend of memoir and educational resource. I think the part of it that's going to stick with me the most is when she discusses women as characters and how they're put under a bigger scrutiny than male characters. And the biggest quote that stuck out to me was, people read books because they want a likable female character, but what male character has ever held to the esteem of being likable? They were criticizing how you shouldn't want every character to be your friend. Like, would you want Hamlet to be your friend? And it started listing all these male characters that are a little skeevy, and it's like, would you want them to be your friend? And that was just, made me step back and go, hmm, you're right. So that was one of the, one of the discussions in that book I really liked, among many others. There were a couple more books that I read that are smaller and would just take more time talking about than they're worth because they were just kind of either stuff for school or not that great. Definitely check out my Goodreads if you want to see anything you missed. Let me know if you enjoyed any of these books that I've read or if you're intending on picking any of them up. Okay, well now that my foot is asleep, I am going to go make a pizza for lunch. Ooh, I just tasted my lipstick. And it did not taste good. Okay. Good night. Ugh. Bye.